Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about energy of electromagnetic field. And in this particular case, it will be magnetic component. The previous lecture was about electric component, and we have derived the formula. Uh, and this lecture is about magnetic component. Uh, this lecture is part of the course uh, called Physics for Teens. Um, presented on unizor.com website. Um, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website rather than from, let's say, YouTube or somewhere else, because uh, on the website it's part of the course, which means there is a menu, there is a sequence, logical dependencies between, between the lectures, and uh, like today, for instance, lecture is definitely based on whatever I was talking about before. Um, now, there is also a math for teen, uh, for teens course on the same website, which is kind of prerequisite, because you have to know math. I'm using all the time, the calculus, the vector algebra, etc. Okay, so let's go to magnetic field energy. Um, now, if you remember from the previous lecture, I have derived the energy density of electric field based on a local um, characteristic of the field, which is intensity of the field. Sometimes it's called just field. I prefer to call it field intensity. Um, now, in this lecture, I will do exactly the same. Um, I will derive the formula for density of the energy of magnetic field based on its intensity, magnetic field intensity why it's important to, to, to mention this word local. Well, <coughs> because we are talking about not energy as an entire um, amount of energy in, in some big space, maybe infinite space. That's kind of difficult. So we are talking about density, in, uh, energy density, which means basically an uh, in, in infinitesimal piece of that field volume of that field, space where the field ex actually exists. What's the, well, I if it's an inf infinitesimal, you can say average amount of um, uh, energy per unit of volume. This, this is something like this. So it's always uh, beneficial to, to deal with this because uh, obviously everything is changing. The field is, um, m most cases, variable. So to, to talk about the total energy actually is kind of difficult. So we prefer to have it at energy density at particular point in space at particular moment in time. So whenever everything is changing, it's okay. But basically this density function is a function of time and point in space. And that's why to, to relate it to local characteristic, which is uh, intensity of the field, exactly at that point, at that moment in time, makes a lot of sense. Okay, that's preamble. Now, how can we do it? Again, back to the previous lecture, I was using um, a capacitor as a model of some kind of a device where um, inside it the electric field is relatively uniform. Again, everything in physics is approximate. So uh, if, if, if plates are close enough of this capacitor and they are large enough as far as the area is concerned, then inside more or less we can just assume that the field is uniform. Same thing with magnetic field. We would like to come up with a device where the field is uniform. Then we will talk about the entire energy which we have spent to create that field in that particular volume of space. And since it's uniform, I can divide it by volume, and that's my density. And that density would be expressed in, obviously, the um, local characteristic, which is field uh, intensity. Okay, so what is the device which can give us the uniform magnetic field? Well, in absolute terms, there is none, but approximately we can uh, think about one. Now, if you refer back to electromagnetism part of this course, 
I was talking about solenoids. Remember, the solenoid is just the amount of wire which looks like this. Now, I was talking about infinitely long solenoid, because infinitely long solenoid, in theory, can give you the really a true um, uniform magnetic field inside if there is a current, electric current, going through it. So we need a battery. And if the battery goes through this, so let's say voltage is R, resistance is voltage is V, resistance is R, then there is a uh, current which is equal to this is Ohm's law, right? That everybody knows. So if this solenoid is infinite, then I did calculate a very important formula that magnetic field inside has intensity V which is equal to mu times n times i where i is obviously the electric current n is density of the wire loops so how many uh, loops per unit of length and mu is uh, magnetic, um, how is it called? Permeability. I, I always uh, mix together permittivity for electric and permeability for magnetic. Crazy words, but in any case, that's what it is. Uh, of the inside, whatever the inside of that solenoid is, because there might be something like a ferromagnetic core, and in this case, it will be a very magnetically. Um, capable device, or it can be vac vacuum, etc. So every, whatever is inside, uh, its magnetic characteristic of the medium inside, and obviously everything depends on this particular qualities of these media. So magnetic field, the intensity of the magnetic field depends on what's inside, not only on current and density of the. Um, wire loops. Now, obviously, if current is changing, intensity is obviously changing as well, as it depends on T. Now, so that's the preamble. So this is something which has been covered before. Uh, if you don't remember this formula, and to tell you the truth, I didn't remember this formula, I went back to my lectures. Uh, so this describes the uniform magnetic field inside. So now let's say I have a switch here. So there is no current in the beginning, there is no magnetic field because there is no current. Now I flip the switch. Well, let's just wait a little bit. After I wait a little bit, my current will be V divided by R. That's kind of a maximum uh, current which can be achieved. But it was zero in the beginning. So, which means that during this time I was waiting, my current was increasing from zero to this value, right? Now, that's a very interesting process. Now we have a variable i. During this very short period of time, while the current was rising from zero to, to this maximum value, my current was changing, obviously. Now, changing current, changing electro, uh, magnetic, magnetic field inside the solenoid. What happens if, if magnetic field is changing? Well, Again, back to previous lectures, the Faraday's law, changing magnetic field generates electric field. I mean, that's how the whole electromagnetic field is propagated, right? So, changing uh, magnetic field, change electric, it generates EMF. Um, uh, and, and this EMF works against 
um, increasing the current. It's against the, the voltage, whatever we are, we are supplying. Again, that's something which has been previously discussed with uh, Faraday's uh, law, etc. Now, that's very important because we have to really to raise to, to rise the, the ele uh, electric current to this value we have to overcome resistance of the rising magnetic field so magnetic field is rising but it resists which means it slows down basically the increase of the current from zero to whatever the maximum is so you remember this uh, um, it's very important whenever you're turning on and turning off the switch the uh, electric voltage can actually be very dangerous sometimes that's why whenever especially when you are cutting down electricity from some maximum to zero because at that particular time the current goes down which means electromotive uh, force tries to increase it and that might be dangerous for certain devices it was all covered in the electromagnetism part of this course so we have to overcome the resistance of the solenoid so to speak it doesn't want to this I to increase as fast as we would like actually not momentarily of course so what kind of work we spend uh, to overcome the resistance of this um, particular electromotive force generated by the solenoid. Well, this is the work which we have to spend and it should go somewhere. Where will it go? Well, it, would, it will go to a potential energy of magnetic field. So when everything is finished, we have spent this energy to rise the uh, electric current to this value and where this energy goes, we have the conservation of energy law, right? So it goes to a potential energy of the magnetic field. Same thing as before in the previous lecture, whenever we are rising the uh, voltage on the capacitor, again, there is some resistance which we have to overcome and eventually it goes into potential energy of electric field between the plates of the capacitor. And here, this energy which we are sp spending to overcome goes to a potential energy of the magnetic field. So what is exactly this particular um, energy. Okay, what we know about um, the uh, um, EMF electromotive force generated um, against increasing current is um, again that's the uh, Faraday's law. Um, this U this electromotive force, I think I use the letter U. Yes. Um, it's equal to minus D phi of T, obviously, by dt, where phi is the magnetic flux. So, whenever the magnetic flux which goes through this um, is changing, so B is changing because I is changing, B is changing. That's why magnetic flux is changing, and magnetic flux rate of change generates my um, electromotive force, which works against. This is obviously a function of T. And minus means that it goes against it. So that's very important. Now, you remember that magnetic flux is basically a product of magnetic force and the area of this uh, of this uh, loop of the solenoid. So for one loop is this but we have more than one loop, right? So for one loop if I know uh, the B, so V1 of T is equal to B times area this is area of of the circle the of the loop of the wire loop one loop now if we have many loops 
here each each one is generated this piece so basically I have to put um, u n of t is equal to minus d phi phi n of t by dt and what is phi phi n of t is phi 1 of t times times n where n is number of loops so far so good so one loop generates this emf and n loops generate this emf which goes against which we have to overcome to drive our um, current electric current to this value okay so this is something which we have to basically spend extra and what I would like to know is how much work we have to really spend on this well work is uh, in electricity the power is um, voltage times uh, current right and uh, the work obviously you, you have to multiply it by time so basically let's put it this way uh, work is equal to u times i times t that's the general formula again back to electromagnetism if you don't remember so this is the work which battery for instance does or whatever okay so let's just calculate it in this particular case so this is the voltage which we have to ex uh, spend extra current I well kind of know so if I will multiply them I will have the work by the unit of time right or which is called power right power of is equal to dW by dt it's a rate of uh, rate of spending some some work okay so let's just do this I mean it's kind of a simple procedure I don't need phi 1 anymore So, phi n of t is equal to n times b, which is this, times the area, right? So, n, because n, uh, n loops in my, in my solenoid, uh, mu is um, permeability of the um, medium inside n is density of the loops per unit of length i is current and a is area area of the loop so I don't need this anymore now let's assume our solenoid has lengths L in which case N is equal to L times N, right? L is length, N is density which is number of uh, wire loops per unit of time so that's why the total number is this so I will put equal to um, mu L N square I of T and A. Okay? I substituted instead of N, L times lowercase n. So that's my formula for phi. Okay. Now, um, whenever 
I want to uh, find you. That's electromotive force, which is basically prevents us from. It's D F N by D T, right? Now this is constant, constant, constant. Everything is constant except this. So I will put mu. Now L times A. This is actually a volume. Remember, we need the volume of the space inside if we calculate the total amount of energy to divide it by to get the uh, density. So I'll put the volume. I'll put volt. So it's distinguished from from the voltage. Okay, um, and n square and uh, di by dt. So that's u. Okay, so the power, which is power is i times uh, u times i, I have to multiply it by i. So um, I will have basically dw by dt which is the power it's multiplication of this electromotive force by i so it's mu times volume times n square times i and times di dt and that's the very important formula from which I will get the work. Well, obviously I can get rid of this. And I can integrate this from 0 to, let's call it I max, to I max. to find out the total amount of energy I have to spend. Now this is the amount of energy uh, to basically rise it from, from I to I plus plus DI. Now the total amount is, you have to integrate it to get all the way up to I max. Okay, that's simple. So my total amount of energy <coughs> total amount of energy is equal to well this is a simple integral I mean I have to really uh, I can disregard the t because everything is differential of t right and everything is di di differential of i so everything depends on i right now i is no new variable substitute variable so it's uh, integral of i di is one half i square right so I have one square mu volume n square and i square max i square max yeah one half of, half is already there right that's this integral <coughs> I mean, obviously, there is a Newton Leibniz. Uh, you have uh, to to have uh, you have to have um, indefinite integral. Indefinite integral from from this. Forget about these constants. From this is one half i square in the limits from uh, from zero to i max. So that's what you have with i max, and from, for zero it will be zero. So that's the answer. From which um, density. Uh, of the magnetic energy would be this work which I have spent divided by volume which is one half mu n square i max okay
So there is only one step left. I will use this formula. <coughs> Instead of I max, I will put B max, so the maximum um, uh, magnetic field intensity which we have achieved by connecting this thing. So uh, B square would be what? Mu square, N square and I square. So the difference between this and this is one half uh, mu B square max. Right? B square max was mu square, n square, i square. And there is only one extra mu here, so I divided it by mu. And this is my total formula. Now, if you remember, for electricity, energy density was one half epsilon e max square. Very similar. So the total energy is their sum. If it's an electromagnetic field, again, don't forget that this is a local characteristic because I took something which has a uniform magnetic field and divided it by volume. So it's per unit of volume. It's a local characteristic. If this is a very small one, then it would be almost down to a point. Obviously, the whole logic of being a small one contradicts uh, uh, to something which I started with. I started with the formula for uh, <coughs> for uh, magnetic field intensity, which is true for infinitely long um, solenoid. But look, that's what physicists do. They approximate to something, to, to the level mathematicians would prefer not to. But look, whatever it is, it is. This is the contemporary kind of approach. No, not contemporary. This is a 19 end of 19th century approach to this particular um, to this particular uh, uh, problem. Okay, so one more thing: we are spending energy, and where is it going? It goes to a potential energy of magnetic field in this particular case. Now, what happens if this is? an oscillating electromagnetic field. We have generated it once. Let's say sun. It produces a lot of electromagnetic field uh, oscillations around it, including the visible um, oscillations, which is the light. So, what's going on with energy? Well, very simple. Sun generates energy because electrons are moving there. That creates a variable electric field and it creates a not only just a variable uh, elect uh, um, electric field, the energy of initial energy which, which Sun spends goes to potential energy of electric field it generates. But since it's variable, it generates magnetic field. To do that, electric field needs to spend that energy, so it transfers the potential energy which it accumulated from the sun to the next in chain magnetic field. So energy is transferred from electric field to magnetic field. Now, what happens next? Well, magnetic field accumulates while it's being created, it accumulates the um, potential energy and when the accumulation is finished, electric energy, which was before lost basically so the, the wave is no longer and well until sun will generate new one but if sun doesn't generate anything else if sun goes down then that's it i mean this energy like a wave go one wave goes and there is no subsequent waves but okay so let's talk about one wave so one wave electric field goes potential energy transfers to magnetic field then magnetic field is also variable and that's why it creates the electric field and transfers the potential energy further and then it, it again and again this exchange between electric and magnetic field that's how energy is moving along the ray of um, oscillations of the electromagnetic field if sun is still 
functioning, then the new wave and new wave and new wave, that's how it goes all the time. Well, that's it. Uh, I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. Um, they are uh, arranged in a little bit better <laughs> kind of uh, geometry and real estate than I have on this uh, whiteboard. Um, and again, don't forget that there are certain references uh, in the text to earlier electromagnetic, for instance, electromagnetism, for instance, uh, lectures. I do suggest you to, to, to read all the referenced lectures again to refresh your memory. Other than that, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.